as we're talking about eye tracking, I think it's important to keep in mind that, that eye tracking is, is certainly a, an important new technology which is likely to have an impact on consumer privacy, but it is only one of a broad array of technologies which in the aggregate raise the, the broader privacy concerns that all of us have been reading so much about. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, eye tracking computer technology. What your eye movements are telling others about you. The day is coming when computers will watch us as we watch them. With eye tracking, a computer program that gleans information from eye movements, marketers, advertisers, and manufacturers will learn more about us than we ever imagined. And while this technology could also be useful for the disabled, it raises questions about privacy protections, as non-resident senior fellow John Villasenor explains. The technology is now uh, becoming practical for a computer to literally look, to watch you watching it, uh, to know where on a screen your eyes sit, to know whether they dwell on or avoid certain phrases. Do you blink more quickly or slowly sometimes? Do your eyes dilate upon reading something that uh, gives you some sort of an emotional reaction uh, and that technology uh, is becoming practical is likely to be incorporated and used uh, in some computer uh, future applications. And what are some of the applications or uses for eye tracking? There are enormous amounts of beneficial applications, the, the most important of course being uh, to enable people who might otherwise have difficulty to be able to navigate uh, a computer screen and an interface with a computer. That, that's, there's, there's nothing bad at all about that, that's a great thing, it's, it's very important. Secondly, there are very legitimate gaming applications in, in the gaming world, and uh, that's obviously not a privacy concern. It, it simply gives gamers and people uh, involved in that industry another way to interface with a machine. Uh, there have been people who have looked at user interfaces. In other words, the ability to help navigate through a user interface with your eyes and with the computer that's tracking what your eyes are doing. And all of those are perfectly harmless as long as there's full awareness by the person uh, interacting with it that in fact that is being used. One of the things about this technology is that seemingly and arguably it is invasive because it is extracting information from us unconsciously. We're not even aware of the story we're telling with our eyes. Our eyes say so much about us and I think we all know that because when we converse with people in person, we look at their eyes, we search their eyes for cues as to meaning and emotion and reaction. And it, it, these sound like very uh, fuzzy, poetic concepts, but they all translate at the end of the day into measurable parameters like how big your, your pupils are and exactly how many times per second did you blink and how, did you, how wide did you open your eyes. And all of these things can be measured and quantified and there's plenty of research that's going on to actually correlate that with what's going on in your thought process. With respect to watching us as consumers on the internet, then that arguably leads to a path where we're being we're giving up far more information than we perhaps took for granted. And so that is that's a that's a new concern that we haven't had uh, in the past. Well, tell me, how is this information uh, synthesized and dispersed, and to whom? There's a, is a whole data analytics industry uh, with uh, all sorts of companies there, many of which are not household names. And what happens is uh, the data that's collected is very often, as you say, it is, is sold and provided to these companies. And these companies will then aggregate that. For example, if you use five or six different apps and pieces of software, even on different platforms, uh, that might the data from each one of those applications might be collected separately, but it might be all combined by some third-party company who will notice, for example, that at a certain time of day you tend to use this application and to be physically in this location, so maybe they're going to serve you coupons for a coffee shop which is down the street at that time of day. So this aggregation of information exposes people to uh, loss of privacy that many people don't really think about. Because it, for most of us, any one interaction with the internet or with applications doesn't convey huge amounts of information. Sometimes it does, but more often than not, it's if you check the weather in a certain city, okay, for some reason you cared about the weather, but it doesn't tell them what your health problems might be, for example. But the c combination of all this information, for most of us, given how often we use digital devices, that paints a fairly complete picture of who we are and what we're thinking about. It sounds like it's finally here, that Orwellian moment. Is this like an Orwellian thing Big Brother is watching, except it's 
big business or big advertisers are watching? To the extent that we're being watched, it's not by one cohesive, nefarious organization. I think it's the, the aggregated collection of a very complex industry that has uh, simply a financial incentive, not a political incentive, not some sort of hidden agenda with respect to controlling us, simply a financial incentive to know as much as we can. So I, I wouldn't go so far as to say we've arrived at, at the, uh, the, the 1984 vision. Well, are we signing away our right to privacy simply by buying and using these technologies? If you actually take the time to read these policies, you will find that they uh, allow an amazing amount of information to be collected. Your location, the specific identification number of your device that only belongs to you. These privacy policies also almost always provide, or very often provide, that, that this information can be shared with other companies and aggregated and analyzed, and it all goes into this giant collection of information about you uh, in, in the proverbial cloud. Uh, so those privacy policies very often aren't very private at all. Are policymakers and lawmakers staying on top of the rights to privacy issues that eye tracking raises? Putting aside the specific issue of eye tracking and talking more broadly about consumer privacy concerns or digital privacy concerns, absolutely. The FTC very recently issued a 100 plus page report uh, with all sorts of detail about some of the various concerns, for example, do not track and opting in and all, all sorts of other things that companies can and should do and consumers can and should be part of the decision process with respect to uh, that can happen in the in the coming months and years and so this is a s solidly on the radar screen of policymakers and to, to be they don't have the perfect solutions but to be fair to them it's a very difficult problem there's no clear perfect answer to a lot of these questions as is so much is always the case really uh, with, uh, with a lot of technology questions. John, we all love the new technologies and all the smart things that our smartphones and computers can do. So uh, is it, uh, I don't know, a sort of take the bitter with the sweet situation? Technology advances always raise new concerns. Uh, and while there are, of course, exceptions, I, I think, I still believe that on balance, we're better off as a society when we enable people to more easily access and interact with information. Uh, but of course, as we do that, we always need to be attentive to how that information could be, could be misused. And all of these things that we've been talking about, privacy policies, eye tracking, and so on, are just the latest manifest, or one manifestation of, of this concern. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu slash mobile.